is Obi-Wan Episode 5 any good? Well, spoilers that I actually didn't hate this episode. Are you serious? Are you serious? So Kenobi Episode 5 comes out at 3 o'clock in the morning for me on Eastern Time. Because I go to bed at midnight, even I need sleep, and I have to be at work at 5.30 in the morning. So I had to wait till I came home on break to watch it. And surprisingly enough, episode 5, I did like it. And I don't want to, you know, be biased. I don't want to say that I hate all Star Wars. No, like many people, I do like Star Wars. In fact, I would say that I love Star Wars. Are you sure? And because episode 5 is good, I'm also not going to sit there and be like, well, you know what, I like the series so far. Before I had my YouTube channel launched, I did watch episodes 1 through 4, haven't had the time to review them, but I'll be honest with you guys, I thought episode 1 through 4 fucking sucked. Simple as that. <laughs> I'm in danger! Having said that, episode 5 is the best one of the batch, but again, you know, one good episode out of 5 doesn't make for a good series, and even with the stuff I did like about this, I still found things wrong with it. That sucks. If you're ready, listen as I do a breakdown and synopsis of this episode. Also, because this is the age we live in, I have to include spoilers since uh, that's a thing. Plus, I don't want to do a spoiler-free than spoiler video because I'm too damn busy. And um, let's begin. And here we go. After two long minutes of promos and recaps, we get to see Coruscant, followed by a younger version of Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi. We all knew that this would eventually happen, you know, through some kind of flashback since the big deal was Hayden Christensen is back as Anakin Skywalker. I do have an issue with this later on because, goddamn guys, the um, younger version of Anakin? Okay. Bullshit. They have to have this little sparring contest and, you know, okay, it's been time, it's been 15 years, I get it, they're not as fast as they used to be, but you have them playing Anakin and Obi-Wan out of episode 2. Go back and actually watch the prequels. You have to give them all the credit in the world because these guys were training. They were busting their ass. And considering these two were training for the series, this sparring seems just very slow, just out of touch. And I don't know, part of me took it, you know, it took me out of it. I'm not going to lie. I'm not impressed. Reva is with Vader and he makes her the new Grand Inquisitor. Why? Because we all saw it coming. Now they have all the rebels down in this facility and Vader orders Reva to have them, you know, locked down. Because last episode, Reva uh, put some kind of like tracking thing and I guess disruptor inside of Leia's droid. Leia's droid crawls up inside the controls and shuts the blast doors. Now they're all stuck and they have to have, well, somebody small and convenient climb inside the vents and try to repair the controls. Unfortunately, as of right now, this gives me this whole like Last Jedi kind of vibe and just, well, we all saw how the fan base reacted to The Last Jedi. <laughs> Obi-Wan knows that they are low on time because Vader doesn't have the patience for his siege. How do we know this? Since, yet again, we get another flashback showcasing Anakin Skywalker and just how impulsive and how impatient Anakin always was. Now take the fact that he's Vader and it's just that much worse. Which to me, you know, contradicts a lot of people on social media saying that with episode 3, well, Vader was just toying with Kenobi and Vader let him go and bullshit. Because Vader doesn't have the patience to sit there and play these cat and mouse bullshit games. He wants Obi-Wan dead. Simple as that. I want him dead. So, all Obi-Wan can do is try to buy more time. He talks to Reva and since episode 2 has been questioning the fact that how do you know that Vader is Anakin? It's not exactly like this is some big, well-known secret. Secret! Oh, it's a secret! And yet again, like everybody called it out because she survived Order 66. And she's not really the bad guy, she's a victim. Like, yeah, gee, we didn't see that coming. I am shocked and saddened by that. Obi-Wan talks to her and he wants a team up that the two of us can take Vader down. How should I trust you? Why should I trust you? And, you know, bad dialogue or just maybe, you know, the character, whatever. And I don't need you, Obi-Wan. I don't need anybody. I'll do it myself. She takes her saber and she cuts the blaster doors open. Now, to their credit, this is a pretty good scene that's got good choreography. The stormtroopers are advancing and the rebels are backing up. And, as they always do, the stormtroopers are missing everything. But now Obi-Wan is, well, he's being Obi-Wan. He's sitting there and he's, you know, deflecting blaster bolts back. He's taking out stormtroopers. It's like, holy crap, where have you been for the past four episodes? I missed you. 
has their back in a way, poor Tala. She gets hit in the stomach and, you know, we get the, the cliche of the hero slow motion and just the music is swelling. You know she's about to sacrifice herself because then she pulls out a bomb. <laughs> That poor droid that never talked from the previous episodes, it's doing its best to shield her. And again, I have to give credit where credit is due. There was good writing because before this entire siege happened, she has this conversation with Obi-Wan about being younger, being an officer, and just how the Empire was lying to her. And they were killing families, but most of all, they were killing children. And that didn't sit well with her. I realized what I did was wrong. So this is her character arc and redemption of, I'm trying to make amends for past sins. And uh, hey, for whatever it's worth, for again, for one time in five episodes, good writing. We finally did it. We get some more flashbacks with Anakin and Obi-Wan. Hayden is doing a better job of the fight choreography, but again, it's not that great. I am not impressed. It is showcasing the fact, though, that Anakin will get so focused on winning that it was going to blind him. Obi-Wan knows the fact that it's over, we've lost, and wants to sacrifice himself so the rest of them can get out of there. But what he's going to do is try to appeal to Reva. And I do like this scene because he says the fact that, you know, he tells Reva that, I, you know, you're not bringing him to me, I'm bringing him to you. And just guilts her into like, you know, back in back there, there's families, there's children. Are you going to sit there and watch Vader do to them what was done to you? And I do like that. She whispers, well, how do you know he won't see this coming? And he's like, because he's going to be so focused on me. So, okay. He's distracted. She lets Obi-Wan back into the caves and he's taking out guards and getting like the transporter ship started. Vader shows up and goddamn, he's just slow and menacing. And what happens next is pretty badass, almost like a video game, but just showcasing the rage and the fucking power of just how deadly Vader really is. A transport ship is taken off, and Vader with the Force fucking stops it with one hand, and you're like, oh shit. You underestimate the power of the dark side. And he's just pulling it slowly back into the ground and crashes it. He's tearing out fucking chunks of the ship with the Force, but they tricked him since that was a decoy ship, and the other ship, it takes off. Like, oh damn Vader, we gotcha. Because Vader is having more flashbacks of his lessons with Obi-Wan when he was Anakin, you know, Reva creeps up behind him thinking he's blinded. Pulls out her saber and is about to strike. Vader easily turns around with the force and blocks it. Like, you know, Obi-Wan, he was wise to use you. Obi-Wan has taught you well. This next sequence coming up is pretty badass. I'm not gonna lie. Wow, that is badass. It doesn't make Vader it overpowered in a sense that it's not flashy, it's kind of simple, but just she's attacking him and screaming and trying to hit him and just easily with one fucking hand blocking everything she's throwing at him. At one point, it was pretty cool where she takes her blade and makes it dual blades. And then with this Inquisitor weapon, it's like this big circle and the blades start spinning. And just Vader, with one hand, slows it down and then just disarms her. Now he has dual blades. And you can't help but, if you actually watch the prequels, think about the scene in Episode 3 with Anakin and Dooku. Well, this is it. Reva's arc is over with. Vader's going to kill her, he's towering over her, looking down, and she's getting flashbacks of when she was a youngling and he was Anakin Skywalker, killing all of her family. So, goodbye Reva, you're about to die, and for some reason he doesn't fucking kill her. Oh, come on! It's not that, you know, I wanted to see her get decapitated, but, well, I kinda did. <laughs> I mean, it, she deserved it. It's just that, you know, it would have been more of like, you know, how much more ruthless Vader is and just reminiscent to episode three. And just the way, you know, he just takes it, takes a saber and he just stabs her through the chest. Well, more like sh through the shoulder because a chest stab would have killed her. She stabbed through the shoulder and just lying there panting. And who shows up? Our buddy, the Grand Inquisitor, which, shock, everybody didn't see this coming, right? I am shocked and saddened by that. And I'm not even the biggest fucking nerd, but, uh, you know, rebels and all that, so... Duh! They're giving these speeches as they do and want to just leave her back in the gutter. You know, this is my problem with the episode is that Vader and the Inquisitor just leave her there. They know she's not dead and Vader is, you know, pretty skilled enough to the fact that if he wanted to kill her and he knows his saber strikes, he knows how to do precision. He purposely injured her. Come on, guys. This is fucking Vader. If he wanted her dead, it would have easily have been done. 
I'm not sure why they keep her alive for, except for the fact that the plot needs it. <laughs> And, um, you know, as Obi-Wan is flying away with the transport, he senses something wrong with the Force. Now, Reva is crawling through the dirt, picking up, you know, one of the sabers. Crawling! As she's crawling, she finds a message that earlier in the episode, Bill Organa sent Obi-Wan. He was mentioning the children and also going to Tatooine, which is pretty friggin' stupid. And, uh, okay, now this is more of the what I have... The issues with this episode because why would Bail be so careless? So now Riva knows where a certain young boy is on Tatooine, and now we get to see the final shot of Tatooine and a young Luke Skywalker sleeping in his bed. I'm not sure what role this has to play in Episode Six or why any Inquisitor would ever would ever interact with Luke, but we'll find out next week. And just um, well, that's the episode. For the finale, I'm going to do the good, the bad, and the ugly. And it's pretty simple. I'm just going to talk about, well, off the bat, what was good. And surprisingly, I did think that there was more good than bad in this episode. Yeah, that is a huge win-win for me. Vader himself. As I mentioned, Vader is big. He's menacing. He's terrifying. People are scared of him, and they should be. Also, what I was worried is that, well, you know, obviously for plot reasons, I didn't expect Reva to kill him. But as Disney and like, you know, modern things have been going, I was worried about if she was going to face him, would she make him some pathetic old man? And it was anything but. They showed Vader as his true power, as he should be, and she didn't hold a candle to him, and she shouldn't, okay? Obi-Wan himself, I did like the fact that we got more like older Obi-Wan back. He was, you know, not, not being this pathetic coward running away, not picking up his lightsaber. He was actually being Obi-Wan. And the final part was Tala and her character arc. I did like the way she died and sacrificed herself. It was pretty good writing and something that I've been wanting and just haven't gotten so far during these first four episodes, okay? Bad? What is bad? Number two comes down to the bad. And as I said, I still think this is a good episode. I would recommend it, but there is some bad in there. And off the bat, it's got to be the choreography because we have Hayden and Ewan and I get it, okay? It's been over 15 years and they're probably not as fast as they used to be. But then the problem comes down to when you're playing characters that are from, well, episode two, if you ever wanted to, go back and watch episode two, then watch episode three, then watch this. You're like, holy shit, these guys, you know, the, the fight scenes kind of suck right now. So it's got to be pointed out. They all seem so slow. Followed by that, the bad is just like the whole plot of things, the way they happen. Like, okay, Bale. Why is Bale just so careless? Why is he easily giving away, you know, the location of Luke and just talking about that? Even to the fact that Obi-Wan, it's a direct message towards him. Somebody could intercept it or pick it up as they do. And now, of course, with Reaver herself, everybody knows that, you know, God, she can't be the main villain. She can't be totally bad. She, have to, she has to have these redeeming qualities. She's a victim. And like, no, she's a terrible person. She's done some pretty bad things. And yeah, some tragic stuff happened to her as a child. But it doesn't negate the fact that all the things that she's done. Yes, you're the bad person. Also, Vader. Vader was the best part of this episode, but Vader is not stupid. He doesn't make mistakes. It's like he says to her, his exact words were, you are of no further use. Vader doesn't keep people around that aren't useful to him. So if she's no use to him, he wouldn't let her live. It just, it makes no sense. And considering how ruthless Vader's been during the past few episodes, I mean, I get it, you know, during episode uh, three, he's trying to like, you know, take Obi-Wan and lure him out. But he's walking around just killing civilians, no problem. Vader has no problem killing people and dispatching them as he wants to. I'm a killer, a stone cold killer. Last but not least, I gotta say number three is the ugly. Okay, guys, we get it. Um, Listen, I think I look pretty good for my age, but the fact that me and Hayden are the same age, and if I shave and stuff, I could probably pass for a 30-31. Hayden is playing a character that was 19, and let's just push it and say 20 at best. And you can tell that he's not 20 years old. You know, Jesus Christ, between Marvel and Disney, Mandalorian, etc., these guys have been killing this whole de-aging technology, and it feels like they didn't spend a single penny on it. Like, Hayden looks great for his age. But he looks great for his age at a guy that's 40 years old, not a guy that's 20 years old. And you can tell. So the fact that every time they show these flashback scenes, part of me was just taken right out of it. 
you understand that, you know, from a fan standpoint that he's not that age, but that's also the point of de-aging. It's like, did you guys just run out of money? Did you just not have it in the budget to de-age Hayden Christensen? And considering the fact that, you know, the whole sequence with him and Obi-Wan, it's one long sequence chopped up into bits. So like what, you spend some money on like a two minute scene at best? Like, I just didn't understand why, like, you know, there's just no de-aging considering if anything, there should be de-aging. And also, these guys are bragging that Obi-Wan is the number one show, and it's like Disney Plus's most watched thing ever, and it's breaking all these records, and okay, so where the fuck is the budget for the de-aging? It just, it makes no sense. Goodbye. In the end, I have to finish this and head back to work because my break is almost over. So, it comes down to Chris. Did you love it? Didn't love it. I liked it. Was it great? Wasn't great. It was good. And that is the sad state of affairs for Star Wars. Because as I said, this is episode five. It was decent. It was mediocre, but that's all it was. It doesn't, you know, like turn off the fact that episodes one through four, I totally thought were fucking stupid. And it comes down to any friend of mine. Some people are like, hey, Chris, we see you got YouTube going and you're trying to be articulate. And would you recommend so far Obi-Wan? And I'm like, honestly, no, I wouldn't. I said, you know what, what I would do is say, start at episode five and watch the recap and save yourself four goddamn hours. And that's the point of what Star Wars has become for a lot of fans. Fans expect greatness. They expect goodness. And they're getting just, eh, they're getting mediocre. And it could be so much more, especially with this kind of budget, especially to the fact that you've got, after so many years, Hayden Christensen back. You've got Hugh McGregor. You even have the voice of James Earl Jones. I'm not sure at his age how much is being digitized and how much they're like, you know, younging it down because let's be honest, the guy's like pushing 90. So, and everybody ages, it's part of life, it happens, and I get that. But to the point that you have this, you know, all this talent and stuff, and I just don't understand why these bad decisions keep getting made. Um, episode six, we have one more left. Is it going to be good? Is it going to be bad? I have no freaking idea. I mean, the show itself, the concept of it, I kind of feel like every week I'm like, damn, there's so many places you could have gone, so many things you could have done. And the Obi-Wan and the Vader we got in episode five is pretty good for the most part. But the issue is it shouldn't have taken five episodes to get to this point. And also, last but not least, I got to add this as a you know quasi-nerd, we are five episodes in. We still haven't seen Qui-Gon. We still haven't even heard him. Nothing. It's like Obi-Wan's been out there for 10 fucking years and he cut himself off from the force. Like, Jesus, what is this? Uh, Last Jedi? So um, that's it, guys. Got nothing else to say. Sorry, I'm low on time. Um, nothing else I can think about. And as always, going to finish this and head back to work.